James Paxton is a Yankee. And um, I'll say right out front, I think it's a good deal. Uh, the Yankees strike early because they need two top flight starters. So they get one right away. Now they could either dabble in the free agent market or explore going after a Kluber or a Carrasco, somebody like that. But this is one of the top starters available on the market, and the Yankees got one of them. Now, they gave up their number one prospect, according to Baseball America, and that's the young left-hander, 22-year-old Justice Sheff Sheffield. But I will tell you this, everybody. He might be listed as their number one prospect. I believe that in the Yankee hierarchy, they don't look at him as their best prospect. Because consider this. Just take a breath and consider this. Nobody likes to see their young players traded. But. The Yankees, all second half of the season, were desperate for starting pitching. Desperate. They never called up Justice Sheffield. They traded for Lance Lynn. They traded for Jay Happ. And the only time Justice Sheffield came up was in the middle of September to work out of the bullpen. He's got a great arm. He does not have great command. And two stops in the minor leagues last year, he walked 50 people. Now... The Yankees are built to win right now. Cashman came on this show and said it. Sheffield is not a product that you buy and use right now. Sheffield is a down-the-line guy who could end up being a really good pitcher. James Paxton is considered one of the better pitchers in baseball. Are there negatives attached to it? Absolutely there are negatives attached. Gives up too many home runs last year. Hard contact percentage is high. He's never pitched over 160 innings in his life in a season. So durability questions, those are there as well. But the Yankees need to bolster their starting rotation, and they did. One down, one to go. Whether that next one to go is Kluber, Carrasco, um, Ovaldi, Corbin, don't know. Not quite sure. But I think this was a smart move, and when you look at the baseball cognoscente, okay, everybody says, wow, the Mariners didn't really get much for him. Now, if Justice Sheffield turns out to be a great pitcher, obviously it will be a deal that will look good for the Mariners because they have control of him for six years, and the Yankees have control of Paxton for two years. But if in those two years Paxton helps them win a World Series, Ryan. they're home free in terms of guilt about trading a guy that could turn out to be a good pitcher. The other two players, I thought it would have been a good deal for Seattle if they got Sheffield and somebody else in the top 10 prospects for the Yankees. They didn't. This, in my opinion, is a good deal for the Yankees. I like the deal. I like the move. And sometimes you have to trade quality right. for quality. Well, so they gave up their number one, quote-unquote, prospect, who I truly believe they don't look as a guy who's going to start right. for them any time in the near future. I don't think you should get that upset about Sheffield. He was going to be gone for somebody. Because, as you said, there were opportunities when the Yankees needed pitching and he wasn't called up. So you knew that he was going to be a bargaining chip to get a starting pitcher. But whether this turns out to be a good deal or not is going to depend on how Paxton pitches. And there's a lot of unknown. As you said, he's been injury prone. He hasn't thrown a ton of innings. He's never pitched in the postseason. You might have gotten Sonny Gray. You might have gotten Tanaka. Right? You might have gotten the next stud on your rotation. You might, have, you might have acquired you know, the, the, the Jimmy Key of the 90s or the Mike Messina of the 90s, or you might have went out and, and got a guy that's Sonny Gray who's going to pitch, and people are going to go, why, why do we get him? There's no stats, Michael, that jump out at you and say that this guy's guaranteed to work. He's never, like, Hap at least had a resume in the postseason. So for a Yankee team that needs that rotation in the postseason, let's face it, the Yankees are going to win 100 games. They're going to be in contention to win the division, and they're likely going to be a playoff team. They're, they're trying to bolster their, their rotation for the postseason. If you acquired a Kluber, you would have known a, you would have got a guy who's got a resume pitching in big games. You didn't get that. And so you still could. I, and you still can. But All as right. far as judging how good this deal is, giving up Sheffield to me doesn't matter. You were going to give him up anyway. question is, what's Paxton going to be? If he's going to be a contributor to a championship, of course it was well worth it. If he's going to be the next Sonny Gray... If he's going to be the next uh, pitcher that doesn't live up to expectations in New York, then you'll look back and say, boy, I wish we would have saved him to get somebody else. And the one glitch in analytics is, and, and, and the glitch reared its ugly head in the Sonny Gray situation, it doesn't quantify. There's no number you could put on and say, oh, yeah, he'll work in New York. He's got the stomach for New York. 
You could do your due diligence. That's where scouting comes into play. You could talk to people that have been teammates of his and try to approximate what he'll do in New York. But until you step on that mound and there are 48,000 people screaming and it's a big game, we don't know how you're going to react. So all the other boxes could be checked. The ability to pitch in New York, that is yet to be right. seen. So that's a concern. Big games are concern. Health is a concern. And home runs. Because he pitched in a ballpark a, that doesn't yield many home runs, and now he will pitch so because he pitched at Yankee Stadium once this year, and he got clubbed for two home runs in the first inning. Right. So yeah, we'll see because it's a different world in Seattle as opposed to pitching in New York. Kids from Canada pitches in Seattle now. He's having coming to New York on a team that's expected to win a championship. So to disagree with you, I still say it's incomplete. You say it's a good deal. I don't think it's a bad deal. I don't think he gave up too much for him. Oh, it's always incomplete. To but himself, it's incomplete but it's because I, I but. But could, you, because we have right. to make, we have to take a stand. I like the deal. Right, and 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 I and I think it's worth it. But we still have to think that because we're going to have to wait and see but how if it you turns remember, out. Remember, I like the Sunny Gray deal. Right, and it didn't work out. out. But it would have been a little bit different analyzing it if they went out and got a pitcher that had a little bit more of an extensive resume. Right. Like I said, you go out and Kluber, he's got value. He's a name. He's pitched in the postseason before. He's been on a team that's been a division championship before. He's pitched in a World Series. So there's, these are the things that the Yankees are looking for. You don't come to the Yankees to help them make the playoffs. You come to the Yankees to help them win a championship. James Paxton did not help them make the playoffs by making this deal. The idea is to try to avoid what happened in the postseason when you didn't get the pitching you were looking for against the Red Sox. That's kind of what it really nails down to, right, is can this kid or guy, he's 30, pitch at Fenway Park in a big situation? That we will, we will find out. One box that he checked for the Yankees, Yankees like pitchers with swing and miss ability. So he threw 160 innings last year, and he struck out over 200. I believe he has the second highest fastball average for a starter, uh, in uh, in baseball, so he throws hard. He has swing and missability, and the Yankees like that. They don't want you to put the ball in play. Just like they strike out a lot, they want you to strike out a lot.